Hello and welcome to another guide and in this guide I will be going over how to use artillery in Hell at Loose. So mainly we'll be going over the basics like how to operate the gun, where to shoot, general tips and tricks and so on. But we will be also going into some more advanced stuff. Artillery in Hell Let Loose is a powerful tool to cut off choke points, uh, shell garrisons, enemy troop clusters. Basically, it also can create an opening for your blueberries to advance through, or clear out enemy strongholds. It's uh, Artillery is a tool that has a lot of destruction power, and to be fair, in a public match or competitive match, we have been on the receiving end of well-aimed artillery, and we all know how frustrating that can be. Once you loaded up the map, yes, the artillery is located in the middle on both ends of the map, namely here and here. And artillery looks at well, it looks complicated to use at first time, but in all fairness it is really easy it's to use. And during this guide I will guide you through all the things you need to know on how to operate it effectively. To start off, let's go over the basics. At first, open up a new squad to get yourself the squad leader role and mark it as artillery. And just, that's just a nice way to show other people, or let other people know you're playing artillery and not on the front line. Spawn in the middle HQ and grab one of the artillery guns. If you jump on an artillery gun, there are two slots. One person will be in the firing seat and one person will be in the reloading seat. You don't need two persons to operate the gun, you can switch between seats with F1 and F2. And it's common to play artillery solo, and you can perfectly do that. Once you jump on the gun, you will be in a firing position, and on the left we will have a list with distances and corresponding mill numbers next to it. Mill is the number you use to accurately align your gun and shell the places you want to shell. On the bottom right, you can see the current mill number, and at the moment the artillery gun is set to 622 mil, which corresponds with 1600 meters, which is also the maximum of the gun. But the first number is the angle that the gun is turned at sideways, and you can basically ignore that number, because you will always be turning left and right towards the marks you want to hit. Well, if we press F2, we'll get into the reloader seat, and the reloader can turn the gun left and right with A and D, and the reloader also can choose between high explosive ammo and smoke shells. HE shells cost 3 ammunition per shot, and smoke costs 5 ammunition per shot. You can find the total ammunition your site has on the top of the map. You'll want to keep an eye out on this number, as you want to leave some ammunition for the commander to use. In public matches, it's quite common that there are no notes up when playing. If there are no notes up, you can always jump in a squad as engineer, request a supply truck or a supply drop, and build some notes to supply you with much needed ammunition. Let's jump back in the firing seat with F1, and this is where you can aim and point the gun at marks on the map. To set up the gun, you will want to input the correct mill number, and with W and S you can adjust this number. W to set the mill number higher, and S to lower the number. On how to calculate and set the proper mill number, I will go over that extensively later in this guide, since this is your bread and butter when it comes to correctly shelling the enemy position. In the firing position you can also make small adjustments to the left and the right with A and D, and these are the basic controls when it comes to artillery. When you want to play artillery in a match, you always want the squad leader role. This way you can see the other marks on the map, placed by other squad leaders yeah, and place marks on the map yourself to set up your gun properly. And also let other people know where you're going to land your artillery. Or even warn squads that are walking straight into your shells. Now let's talk about the effectiveness of artillery. It depends on two factors. The biggest and major factor is the communication of your team, like, are the other squad leads communicating and feeding you with information and marks? The more accurate this information is, the more effective your artillery game is going to be. If there aren't any marks on the map, don't be shy and just ask nicely for updated marks and information in the command chat. There are always some people willing to help out. Another factor that comes into play when playing artillery effectively is your own map knowledge. For example, you can recognize the common spots for garrisons or where infantry usually clusters up and attack from, and this knowledge comes from playing the game a lot and through sheer experience. Now we know almost all the basics when it comes to operating an artillery gun, except for setting up the gun and finding the correct mill number. 
When you are in the firing seat, you can see a list of distances and the corresponding mill numbers on the left hand side. Although this list presents you with one problem. Let's say the target you want to hit is at 965 meters. If you read through the list on the left, you can see that 1000 meters corresponds with 764 mil, and 900 meters corresponds with 788 mil. The number we want is somewhere between 764 and 788 mil. Sure, you can calculate the correct mil number out of the top of your head or with some pen and paper, but there's no time for that. So the problem is either you guess the number and hope you get feedback on your shot from other squad leaders, or you do the math and calculate it accurately. For example, in a competitive hell let loose, you don't have the time for this and you want to be on the ball straight away. Luckily for us, there have been some developers who saw this problem and created a solution for this. There are different kinds of resources to help you calculate the correct mill number. First of all, there is HLL Artillery Calculator on the Google Play Store or the App Store. These apps are free of charge and easy to use. And there is also a website called Hell and Loose Calculator. We'll post the links in the descriptions below. On this website you can select the map and then click on where you want the shell to land on the map. It will give you the correct mill settings and it shows you a radius where the shell will land. We will come back to that later. The one I am using is the HLL Artillery Calculator on Android. And now when you open up the app, you got a few options on the top. I usually use Dark Mode, Show List and Always On. Show List and Always On are the most useful ones. Show List will give you a history of your 5 last shots and Always On prevents your phone screen from turning off. If you are playing Soviets, then flip the last button called Soviet. Then you will get accurate calculations for Soviet. Now the app works like this, you input the distance with the keypad, for example, our 965 meters, press the equals button and it will spit out an accurate mill number for you. Set up the artillery gun accordingly and you will hit 965 meters accurately. Let's try rough the shell and follow it with the admin cam. As you can see, we set the mark at 965 meters, input 773 mil on the gun and fire away. The shell has a travel time of roughly 23 seconds and while we wait for a shell to come in, let's pause the video and talk about the radius where the shell is going to land. Back in the old days you had to manually adjust the gun by a few mil and adjust the traverse angle to create a blast zone where your shells will land. In the current update of Hell Let Loose your shell will land in a radius of 25 meters. So this means although our mill input is that accurate, it will land somewhere in a radius of 25 meters off your mark. And it's completely random where the shell will land in this radius. Let's go over some closing general tips and tricks while setting up your gun and shooting. When you're in the firing seat and aligning the gun properly, you can turn and adjust the mill setting simultaneously by pressing the turning direction and W or S to adjust the mill number. This way you can turn and set the mill at the same time, since speed counts. Another tip I can give you is when playing artillery, you are mostly watching the map for new markers or new information to pop up. Whilst looking at the map you can also turn the artillery gun and input the correct mill numbers with your keyboard. Also you can look over the map with your mouse. Another thing you can do is speed up the reloading and switching between seats. As soon as you reload the shell and the progress bar hits the L of loading, you can start holding F1 to jump seats and be in the firing seat before the animation or the progress bar finishes. You can also do this by sound. As soon as you hear the lid of the barrel closing, you can start and pressing F1 and this is actually a bit more accurate. The last one is more of an advanced tip and trick and that is always think ahead. For example, it takes roughly 25 seconds for a fired shell to land, in the 25 seconds a lot can happen. Plan your shots accordingly and shoot well ahead of friendly infantry. It takes roughly 50 seconds for infantry to run across one square and your shots when playing is about 30 seconds per shot with reloading time added. So we went over the basics on how to set up your artillery gun, the next big question is where to shoot. At the start of a match you will have to wait and sit out a warmer time before you can jump on an artillery gun. 
Instead of enjoying the beautiful scenery, you can use this time to think ahead about where you want your first shots to land. And also, check if the middle point is on the flank or in the center. If the middle point is on the flank, you will want to jump straight into the reloading seat with F2 and traverse the gun in the right direction. Next thing you can plan ahead is recognizing the choke points at the start of a match, or try and predict what enemy will be coming from when heading towards the midpoint. Set up a marker for yourself or ping that place and do the calculations on the website or dab. Now that warm up time is over, jump on the gun straight away and start turning it towards the midpoint. If the midpoint is in the middle, start in the firing position straight away. And then instantly start adjusting your mill number because this takes the longest. You can do this simultaneously and start firing on key points somewhere behind the point to support your own infantry pushing into the hard cap. Also, keep in mind that the occasional team kill is just unavoidable and it will happen once in a while, so don't feel too bad about that. Now the start of the match is over, you mostly rely on information given by the commander or other squad leaders. Keep the map open, keep analyzing the battlefield and see what marks are up. If there isn't enough information to be effective as artillery, don't be afraid to ask. Ask squad leaders to set and update their marks or ask the commander for a recon plane. Also, the more you play, the more experience you will get at recognizing default spots for, let's say, garrisons, uh, enemy strongholds or where they will be pushing from. And also, as final thought, don't bother with hitting tanks since you will need a couple of direct hits to destroy a tank in the current update. You can, however, destroy transport trucks, supply trucks and ammo boxes, mines and so on. Other things you can't destroy are OPs and garrisons, they will have to be dismantled by infantry. But you can use them to shell that position and pick up spawn waves and whatever. The last thing I want to go over with you guys is the anti-RT play or recon. At some point during the match the enemy recon will show their head and try to prevent you from getting on the artillery gun. It can be annoying to deal with since you spawn at mid HQ, load in and straight away get shot in the face. Luckily there are a few ways to deal with this. In competitive hell let loose anti-RT is almost an art form. If you look at what they set up and what they do to run interference with artillery. For defensive measures they set up nodes in front of the gun, encircle it with barbed wire, put up Belgian gates with trucks on it, place AT, AP mines and so on. And if we saw last seasonal, they even had shenanigans with 7-800 meters ICBM bazookas. Speaking of long range bazookas, I will be releasing an in-bed guide for AT players as well, on how to pull off those long range shots. Luckily, that's all in competitive and the coordination and pre-planning that goes on to those matches are nothing compared to a public game. In a public game, you usually only have to deal with the recon team once in a while. Okay, so how to deal with this? First of all, remember we are taking the squad leader role and therefore we can place an OP. Don't place your OP next to the artillery guns, but put it a bit to the side so you can spawn there and clear out the middle HQ from an off angle. Also, when clearing out enemy recon, make sure you look around for an OP in the near area. Else they will just come back in a few seconds and make you miserable again. Now another thing you can do is set up transport trucks to each side of your artillery guns and prevent them getting a long range angle on you. This comes with a footnote though, don't place the trucks too close, else you will only blow yourself up. Another thing you can do is ask the commander for a supply drop in mid HQ and just build some nodes in front of the gun. Last but not least, keep your eyes open. If you are setting up and aligning the artillery gun through the crosshair, keep looking through and past the crosshair to see if you can spot anything moving and prevent them that way from getting the drop on you. If you are really in trouble and need help with clearing out enemy recon, just ask for it in the command chat and usually one or two will respond and help you clearing out the middle HQ. If you endured this long throughout the night, I hope you enjoyed watching it and learned a thing or two, or even inspired you to jump on the artillery gun, feel free to drop a comment or feedback and I will see you in the next guide.